But what if the devices in your home got involved in raising your kids? Well, we have two stories today from NPR's health team on parenting in the age of Alexa. First, meet the most amazing doll of all time. Pull a ring and this doll could speak. Would you like pickle ice cream? <laughs> but what she couldn't do was listen or interact. And Chatty Cathy certainly could not send information to the cloud. Flash forward 50 years and technology has changed. Mattel's latest device, something the company planned to call Aristotle, could get to know your child, even respond to your kid's needs. If your baby cried, Aristotle could play a lullaby. There is a huge world of difference between a Chatty Cathy and an Aristotle. He's an advocate with the group Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood. When he first heard about Aristotle... My first thought was, wow, is this creepy. In marketing materials, the Aristotle device looks like a baby monitor with a camera. It was designed to be connected to the internet and placed in a kid's bedroom. You're talking about a device that was designed to displace essential parenting functions like soothing a crying baby or reading a bedtime story so that children would form an attachment to it and then that device could be used to collect all sorts of information on a child in their own bedroom. Now some tech bloggers wrote enthusiastically about Aristotle and its planned release but the buzz quickly turned to criticism when pediatricians, parents, even politicians weighed in. Two lawmakers on Capitol Hill wrote to Mattel with privacy concerns. What was the company going to do with all that information they were collecting from children? Thousands of people signed petitions asking Mattel to pull the plug, which the company did this month. We have to remember that children don't really understand concepts such as privacy, or machine learning, or the way that the device might be reacting to them or manipulating them. Rodeski says when technology is feeding your kids play ideas, this can limit their creative thinking, and the device could drive them away from interactions with their parents and friends. Evidence shows that children learn a lot more from technology when they have an adult scaffolding them and helping them apply what they've learned. That technology isn't going away. Artificial intelligence is becoming more responsive. The question is, can devices be designed to help bring parents and children together? NPR News. All right, AI technology, as it's known, may have been created for adults, but it is super popular with kids. All right, AI technology, as it's known, may have been created for adults, but it is super popular with kids. Alexa, play Peter Bear Jelly Time. We're talking about personal assistant devices like Amazon's Alexa and Google Home. This happens in my house all the time. When kids figure these things out, they can't stop themselves from calling out orders. Annabelle Stowe is four years old. She likes to use Alexa to organize her grocery list. Alexa, add cauliflower to my shopping list. Then there's Asa Laura Rodriguez. He's five. And he likes to ask Alexa lots and lots of questions. Like this. Alexa, do you ever fart it? Alexa, did you ever fart? Amazon has sold more than 10 million Alexa devices in the past few years. A child psychologist at the University of Montana says these devices have the potential to be good educational tools. One family I talked to used it to track the Mars rover. One problem she has is the way people interact with the devices. You can yell at them, you know, I don't like that song, <laughs> skip ahead, or, you know, that you don't necessarily have to be polite. In fact, many people are pretty bossy with it. That might not seem like a big deal. I mean, it's just a computer, right? As an adult, you might be able to recognize, well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's just my Google Home. It's just my Echo device. Your kids, they may think it does matter. Because, Severson says, young kids see Alexa very differently than adults do. They may think she has feelings or emotions, or that there is actually a woman living inside that cylinder. Take Tennessee Emmerich. He's four and has grown up with Alexa. We have a small Alexa. Is she a person? Yes, she is. Where does she sleep at night? She sleeps at the apartment building. Do you love her? Yes. So if a kid thinks Alexa is like a person and the child is learning how to interact with people by watching you, the parents, Severson says parents have to be careful how they treat Alexa. Recognizing that your kids 
particularly young children are really paying attention to you as the parent for cues on how do I interact with it, how do we interact with others. So if you want your kids to say please and thank you, you probably need to say please and thank you to Alexa.